and the, the Dallas ball games, of course, Dallas one time they, they, they spanked us. <laughs> 37 to 9. <laughs> you have to remember that. Right, yeah. <laughs> but uh, especially the Minnesota ball games, where, where we go up there and circumstances happen that, that are just, you know, you, you, you would never have thought that they would, they would be the, the, the outcome of the game. Like a block, a block field goal taken back, you know, the whole way for, for seven points. In fact, I can tell this story. And Tom kicks the ball, it's, it's blocked, and, and Bobby Bryant picks it up, and he's coming down. If you remember, in Minnesota, the day we played the old Met, we were both on the same sidelines. The Rams were on, you know, were on the north side, and, and, the, and the Vikings were on the, on the south side, but we were all right there together. And here comes, here comes Bryant running down the sidelines right in front of us. And I'm standing next to Larry, Larry Brooks. And I look at Larry and I go, you think I should? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to get crossed my mind just to step out there and make a play, you know. <laughs> a 15 yard penalty. Um, you get the franchise after the 1994 season, you were out by then, but the Rams, who there were so many people who were so invested. In fact, there's a group out here today bring back the Rams, which I'm 100% behind. situation. But, I mean, the, I, don't, I can never refer to them as the blank, blank Rams. They're the Los Angeles Rams. As far as I'm concerned, that is the team. And, you know, I can say it, you know, I was a broadcaster with the team, but I didn't play for the team. I didn't pay for the team. What was it like when they pulled out, moved to St. Louis as somebody who was, you know, for so many years, you were the face of that franchise? Well, you know, that all that all went down. Uh, and, and we had a plan. We had a we had a real good plan of keeping it in in Southern California in Anaheim. Uh, and then that that plan got foiled. And it, when that when, when the plan got foiled, of keeping it in in, in, in Anaheim, uh, we realized that there was that, you know, that something was going to happen. And when the, when the news came up. That they were moving to, you know, to St. Louis. That was that was kind of devastating for all of us. It really was, and, you know, for the for the current players. That's you know, you, you got to go where you where you got to go to go to work. But uh, for the retired players and, and players you know, in previous years, that kind of hung us out. You know, we kind of been a you know in a limbo. We're out there in the, in the zone somewhere, and it's it, it's it's rather really difficult. You know, to, to think about those days and, uh, and and realize that you you really don't have a home anymore. You know, from from your career, it's uh, it's changed and uh, unfortunate. But uh, that's the name of the game in, in today's you know modern world. Uh, the economics of the game have to, have to come into play, and uh, you know it's, that's part of the national football. Team. Ladies and gentlemen, on the other side of this guy was one of the greats ever. Uh, he did actually weigh 225 pounds and played at that weight and was one of the greatest defensive linemen ever. Of course, turned out to be a phenomenal actor, director, producer, and now he's right here, Mr. Fred Dreyer. Uh, got 
kicked over and snapped, just snapped like a wolf. I mean, I heard it. And came out, came out and uh, went to the locker room to get it taped up. And uh, went inside and took a picture of it. <laughs> and I'm, and on the way in, I'm telling Clarence Shields, who was our, one of our doctors, one of our world's people surgeons, I said, Clarence, is broken. I said, you need to take it up. So he said, well, let's take a picture of it. So he takes the picture and it comes out and shows him the picture and he says, look, it's, it's broken, it's snapped. I said, I knew that. I knew. I'm a doctor. I told you that. <laughs> I said, tape it up. He goes, I can't do that. I said, yes, you can. Tape it up. He goes, I don't know how to tape. You're a doctor. You got to know how to tape an ankle. <laughs> it's surprising what they don't know. <laughs> That's scary. Well, they call it practice. <laughs> Medical practice, yeah. Um, did you think, Jack, that you'd be able to make it through if you guys got to the Super Bowl? I mean, seriously, you had a broken leg. I mean, that's the bottom line. And you, I don't know how much um, pain killing you were able to do, because I'm sure if you took too much, it's going to affect your play. So, did you think you'd be able to make it all the way through? Well, it, it was a it was moment by moment. Jason, you know, can you play this play? Can you play the next play? Uh, you know, can, you, can, you, can you get through the pain of, of, of this situation right now? Uh, and it was, thank goodness, the coaches, the coaches trusted me enough to know that I would take myself out of the game if, if I was a detriment to the football team. So it was basically a, a play-by-play situation. So you weren't out there tripping, you know, on the 30-yard line and not knowing where yeah. you were and just stumbling around? No, no, no. You can't take enough painkiller them to just you know take that pain away. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. can. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, as long as you stayed away from me it was alright. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the book, because it was Sunday the legend of Jack Youngblood, and that's the absolute truth. Um, and of course, Fred Dreyer, one of the greats as well. And uh, that hot defensive line that the Rams had was just unbelievable. And Fred, I asked Jack this: um, There's a group here bring back the Rams. The Rams took off in '79 or in '94. Uh, and what are your thoughts about it, if there's a chance about bringing them back? Does it does it make a difference now? Well, well, somebody's going to be here, you know, I mean, it, it, uh, depending on what uh, the ownership wants to do in St. Louis, they have a lease problem, don't they? I think uh, they can get out of that anytime they want. Um, I don't know. It's, it's going to be either San Diego, Oakland, or Buffalo, or some team like that that's going to come here. It might be two teams. Who knows? It depends on how many stadiums they go. Are you out there in uh, North Oak or, or right across the street here? Who knows? I don't know. But I mean, there's room for, I think, at least certainly one team, maybe two. Who knows? Um, your, what are your thoughts about Jack, first and player? guy you knew for a long time ago. It's interesting, you know, uh, you know uh, when I was called uh, uh, to uh, add some comments, I, I assume my comments are in here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when, I was asked, when I was asked to comment, uh, you know, I, I don't know what you, uh, you know, there's the football player and then there's the person, and, and you can't really separate the two because both are, you've got a great person and a great football player, and, uh, and what, what do you do? How do you separate it? Well, you don't separate it. You just you, you, you tie them both together and you write a book about it. And uh, and the interesting thing is, is that uh, I think with Jack, I, he, he, he honestly made everybody around him better. He made me better. He made Merlin better. If you can imagine that. He made Merlin better and uh, Larry Brooks and uh, Jack Reynolds and uh, all those guys. Uh, Isaiah Robertson, Jimmy Youngblood, and King Yetis, and all the guys that played in that in that ten-year period. Uh, and if you look at the statistics uh, for those ten years, from '72 to '81, uh, '72 to uh, 1980, the LA Rams led most of the defensive statistics in the National Football League for a decade. And uh, you can Google it, which we all did, and we took a look at it. I don't, I don't know if you have to find points, points yeah. uh, uh, yards game. Right. You know, all, all, all the six, the 26 uh, stats, I think they, they led 